Commissioner Teacher, would you mind praying for us? Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the chance to come into to this building, Lord, and just uh, just ask for your blessing over over everything that, that happens, Lord, within within our minds privately, Lord, and even publicly. And Lord, I just pray that you please just watch over us yes. and direct our path, Lord, direct our decisions. Uh, let them be uh, your will, Lord, and not ours. Lord, we love you so much. Thank you for the privilege of just uh, getting to be in a country that's free, that we can pray, and that we can vote on things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, before uh, we get started, just want to um, lay a little ground rules. If you guys can uh, please keep it quiet in the audience for us, that'd be great. Thank you. Sorry to be a little hard on this. Um, we're just pressed for time tonight. Um, public comments, if you want to sign up for, again, Cottontown, please come up here and sign up. It would be great. Um, uh, without objection from the uh, county, uh, for our, our legislative committee, I want to remove public comments for that when we get into new business for Cottontown Community Center and Post Office. Um, also, I just want to kind of lay a little ground rules for how meetings, these meetings work. Um, I know we've got a new commission, about 18 new commissioners, and uh, I think Commissioner Hyde and myself are the only two commissioners from the old commission sitting at the table. And, um, typically, I mean, we operate according to Robert's Rules of Order, so I'll just, and I know you guys have kind of gone through your first late committee meetings, and we've, uh, they've been great, and it's been a lot of great dialogue and open dialogue, but uh, we also have to be sensitive to time and, and sensitive to uh, citizens that show up. So part of that procedure is, is running a good and, and tight orderly meeting, and so I will uh, try to keep us on, on line. If you want to um, make a comment when we open the floor up, please direct your comments to the chair. And after we prove and, and we can keep things moving fast. Um, I will ask the audience to uh, be quite an attentive as, as much as possible, please, uh, so we can not be distracted and, and get to the order of business. Also, um, just for some of our new commissioners, uh, it's not necessarily a rule, but uh, um, you know, this is a, a, a committee that we're trying to conduct business as, as part of our, our kind of been a long-standing courtesy to allow commissioners who aren't on the committee to address the um, the uh, committee uh, during the meeting at different times outside of public comments. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to necessarily do that tonight for the sake of time. Um, so please don't be offended if I don't recognize the commissioner has their hand raised in the audience um, because um, the first order of business is for us conducting the meeting at the table and as time allows once the discussion is done is typically how it's been done. And again, the past month has been great, but I just want to bring that order back in a little bit. Um, to how the meetings really operate here at, at this table to try to keep things efficient and keep us on time and be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, we did, one thing we changed, we did make from the old commission to this one is we went from 30 minutes per meeting to an hour, but we're finding ourselves going two hours per meeting or more, and so it's getting a little bit, um, I think we got out of here at 11 o'clock last Monday night when meetings started at 5, and so that's a little bit, uh, it, it's great, but I think there's a sensitivity and we have maintenance personnel that are here locked up and citizens who are waiting till 11 o'clock for us to speak. So we do want to be sensitive to citizens' times. And, and so as chairman, we want to run those meetings efficiently. So um, without any further ado, uh, I will make a motion for uh, approval of the agenda for tonight. I'll second it. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passed unanimously. Uh, approval of the minutes. I make so a motion we approve the minutes uh, for next for last month. Motion by Commissioner Teachner. I have a second. Second. Second by Commissioner Rogers. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Uh, recognition of the public. If there's any um, public comments anybody wants to make for our first agenda, agenda item under old business, which is standing rules and procedures, um, now would be a great time to do that. Um, so there is no public comments that anybody wants to present. We'll go ahead and close public comments. And again, I will move for the Cottontown Community Center this list will have public comments when we get that. We're going to try to move this. This uh, standing rules and procedure is a agenda item that we've had from, I guess, last month. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a good discussion. It's based on how the government, we can limit government um, and how to protect citizens from government, um, which I know you guys are probably excited to hear that. Uh, but we want to be sensitive to this discussion since it, it was deferred from last month. So. Report of the chairman uh, did have uh, a brief report. Uh, ben, uh, uh, Mr. Allen, our, our county attorney, alluded to it early. Our law clerk, uh, Abby, is no longer leaving, so we do not have that deficiency in the uh, law office, which is uh, yeah. uh, good news. And so I know there was a little stress there about uh, um, getting some additional hands, and, and we're going to be take, talking about some stuff in budget to bring forward for the new commission for the full commission next Monday. 
about uh, some overtime compensation and get a little bit of part-time just temporary help for a couple months to alleviate the strain. Uh, so we'll be able to, uh, that'll be in budget tomorrow night as well as the full commission explaining that. Um, we did add one thing for the law director postings. There was not a salary range. And so um, we added that last week and started to get a little bit more hits. And so that was one thing that uh, was left off um, uh, of the original posting. So uh, I just wanted to make mention of that. Um, it's not on the agenda, um, but I don't know. If, uh, I guess on the, I'm, I'm going to talk about this. I'm wondering if we need to have another 30 days extended for the uh, application process since we didn't have a salary on there for a couple weeks, um, which we would need to make that, that motion here in this committee. Um, but um, it's, or something to think about at the full the commission on the 17th. So uh, just keep that in mind. My suggestion would be wait to see if you get enough applicants and if you don't extend it at that point instead of preemptively extending it basically another six weeks. Or so that's fine. I, mean, I know that it's no, the 24th, I think, yeah. was the deadline, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the 24th. So in our commission meetings on the 17th, so then we'd go like two or three weeks without even having a meeting mm -hmm. um, to even address it. So it would be kind of a closed posting at that point. Mm -hmm. so it's because then it would be, instead of bringing up in November meeting, we'd be bringing up in December meeting, and whoever we hire is probably going to need several weeks to wind down their practice. It, we're looking at if we push it back too far going into well in the next year. Right now it's a 30-day posting, mm -hmm. which expires like next week, end of next week, as far as what we, we voted on. So my thought was like if, if it, you know, I, I think adding the salary range added a little bit more uh, interest in the position. I, I looked on Indeed.com and it listed like a, a sample salary of forty-five thousand to sixty thousand dollars, and so no attorneys going to apply for that. So it definitely was a, uh, a misrepresentation of the position. Um, and so without having that salary range in there, uh, which kind of showed a little bit of, uh, of a lack of applications um, for that process. So I'm just only making it making you guys aware that the thirty days ends. Like I think on the 24th. 24th. And after that, if we're just not taking applications, I mean, it's just. How many have applied? Uh, we've had two legitimate ones. One that was a, um, an illegitimate one, I would say. It was an accountant from accountant California, from California that so. does not have a law license anywhere. I have no idea how to do that. So, uh, Ill illegitimate one, I would say. So, um, so, but I know that I think there's some other people might have expressed interest and people are asking people. So, I, I just wouldn't want to close that off as far. I wouldn't want to limit ourselves other than the fact of just making you aware that if, if we close that process off so I, I don't know uh, any thoughts or discussion on that but. it sounds like I mean we want to have a good corral to pick from so I, I, I would think that it would be a good move can I make a motion for that um, I, I'll, I'll, on the agenda. it's not on the agenda no. so we ought to print this <coughs> so materially I'd be out of order okay. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I'm just saying it'd be something for discussion on Monday from the floor something to consider uh, uh, talking about um, doing. so um, then we can address that in the ad hoc committee okay. after this as well so I just want to bring those two things up under my chairman's report but uh, that closes my report uh, report of the county mayor no report all right Old business, standing rules and procedures. Uh, so last week, um, Ben sent to myself and, and Chairman Hyde, um, kind of who all submitted, you know, that was per our resolution and that we agreed on the uh, September meeting, who all submitted um, changes or suggested changes to the rules. So we had five that were, were forwarded to us that we, I forwarded on to you guys last week to give you guys plenty of time to read through these. Two of these were kind of long things, <coughs> and so uh, to go through, and the uh, goal was to go through all these tonight, and it is 5.45 right now, so um, we have until 7 uh, as our goal, so we're, we're trying to actually move through this rather ex expeditiously. Um, I wanted to start, if you guys weren't opposed, with commission rules, it was called round 2.2 document, um, and the top of that document was titled, so you don't have a PDF, it's rules and procedures and edits, it's the one that's typed up. Uh, it's not that one, David. It's a, a different one. Um, it's, it's this one that's typed up. No, okay. Do you have that one? I don't think I do. Print it out. Yeah. So it's not the one that's attached to the agenda? The Summer County. Well, that, that's our point of departure. We're, we're talking about the amendments, the suggestions that were given from uh, commissioners. So, yeah, no. Um, I printed off. 
personal copies if you want to run a night time. Did you bring your laptop by any chance, or did you print these off? Okay. Okay. I printed them all. I guess you would have to go verbally go along. Yeah. Did you guys? Yeah, these are all Here's my this copy. You guys will look at that one. So, um, well, I'll just go ahead and, and start. Have, I can run my copies real quick if you have a... Yeah, you can take mine, handwritten notes right yeah. here. I printed off uh, first copies too, if you will. You, did you guys print off this one that's submitted? Yeah, I've got it. That's, that's that one. Um, yep. <coughs> I don't think it's attached. Yeah, that's uh, the that's only one attached one is... No, it's different. It's still this different. is the one that we... Uh, we you can make copies of, of these. Let's kind of get bulk notes. Right. Yeah, uh, we can move on to some other ones. So what? Well, thanks, the copy that's in this agenda is what is in response to uh, Mr. Allen had sent a memo and get, or given a memo to us in legislative on, on the 12th of November. And as part of that memo response, I had typed up. He and I discussed um, these rules, like some things that he had questions about talking to CTAS. Um, so he and I got on the phone for an hour or so and talked about um, his memo as well as the <coughs> CTAS and kind of agreed, and that's what we presented in the special call meeting on November the, September the 19th, excuse me, and that's what's in this packet, and that's what Ben has labeled as version 1, distributed 9 22 because that's when it was emailed out to all the commissioners after our full commission meeting on the 19th. Right. Uh, but what it has is strike-throughs where pretty much mainly what we did is struck through things that were either redundant or... And I kind of explained, you guys remember on the note 19, some suggestions that I had that were more, that would, would bind us as a commission more than the state law would allow us. And so I guess I conceded to those edits to pull those back. So that's what's in the agenda packet right here. So I don't know if you get, is that clear enough? I mean, yeah. you guys have already seen this. Yeah. Seen this that. That's new. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, well, there was some other smaller amendments uh, sent in while she's making copies of those. Um, one was uh, the discussion on refer, defer, and table. So, Chairman High can speak to that a little bit long, better. Um, those have been around a long time. They're not parliamentarily correct. They might have been at one time, but right now they're not. Um, and I understand that it's a source of angst for some, but my opinion is one thing that I did do, because I, I couldn't stand them either, and it, it bothered me. One thing that I, I did in this, this new rule uh, suggestion is just kind of clarify what refer, defer, and table are. You know, defer doesn't exist in Robert's rules. It's really the motion to refer. Um, and the motion to table, the way we use it or anybody uses it, usually is incorrect. The, the correct motion to table is to lay on the table and that you're temporarily putting something on the table so that you can set it aside to do more important business or, or more urgent business, and then you move to put it back on the table. And so what it really is, the motion to table, is to postpone indefinitely because you're just trying to kill it. So that was, I clarified that language in these rules under table. Um, defer, basically I clarified it, it it's delaying consideration. It's post, the motion to defer is closer to a postponing to a certain time. Uh, and so I kind of clarified in that. Um, and it, the old commission uh, forever had defer with just a simple majority, 13 votes, a lower threshold, but it had discussion. And the motion to refer was always a two-thirds majority where if you want to basically silence debate and just go ahead and vote, and it's non-debatable, but it's a higher threshold, um, that's just referring back to committee. You can defer to a certain time and, and state the committee, um, and then table was moved to kill. I personally think we should just keep these as is, but that's just my opinion. Obviously, I, I, know, I think Chairman Hyde <coughs> has been around 30 years and have used these and I don't know if you have any opinion on refer to front table as we've kind of written them up. I, you know, my opinion is um, what works is what we ought to do. And I mean, for 30 years, this is what the commission has worked by. I'm fine with it. I understand what it is. I think any older commissions, commissioners that have been here understand it. I, I think it probably was a simplified way of presenting those two things. I, I think it might even be for the best. It's a, it's a more simple explanation of things. It'd be easier for everyone. So, yeah, I, I agree. And it's just, I mean, but you guys can disagree or, or not. So uh, I will um, stop myself for a second. Um, I 
Do I make a motion on move uh, that we discuss these rules? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I can get a second. A second. All right. I second by Commissioner Teacher. If uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. Uh, let's get, I'll call myself to order. Um, so that was one. So I'll make a motion that we keep a refer, defer, and table as is in our rules adopted on September the 1st. I second it. All in favor say aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. So we're going to keep refer and defer. And that was a uh, one that was in some of these, but also as a separate email asking about that. Um, only we can, I, I like keeping it that way because some of these are just wording. Um, honestly, the actual Robert's Rules version of wording. Obviously, Robert's Rules is what we operate if nothing's written. So it's just by default. So some things are just a given. Um, let me close that one out. There was one um, preamble language uh, submitted by uh, Commissioner Junong, and that came out before. Um, and that, so I, I guess it, if you didn't print off her PDF or what she has, um, I can read that aloud. But I, I think you guys read the PDF and the preamble language. I don't know if, <coughs> I like the, if anybody had any objections. Or, I, knew. I, I have to step okay, in sure. here. Okay. Um, so I know that it can be a little confusing because we are constitutionally allowed to have prayer before the meetings. There's a, a long line of Supreme Court cases that very specifically state that. The stating uh, specifically this commission's Judeo-Christian values, that would almost certainly be a violation of the Establishment Clause. And also, this is for a practical standpoint on my end. If someone ever gets fired from the county and they claim, well, it's because I'm not a Christian, that's going to be Exhibit A in their lawsuit against us. Um, if we can maybe change that wording some way. Um, but it applies only to the commission. It, it well, still would be a, a statement from the county. I'm going to read this statement. Okay. Without objection. So the preamble was submitted um, by some citizens, which I thought was a good idea. It's kind of like it was the intent to be closer to push us closer to being a, a charter form of government, which you can do a lot more flexible things to protect citizens when you have a, a charter. I'm not talking about like Metro, but um, it, like that type of thing, but where you can organize yourself to be more binding and more restrictive. And so the preamble is kind of a part of that, and that's where that was taken from. Um, I, I like, it's kind of like a mission statement, so it, it reads like this. We, the Summer County Board of Commissioners, as a legislative branch of Summer County, Recognize that all powers are reserved by the citizens of this county. So I like that uh, because the citizens are our bosses. So we're, we're just servants. Uh, thank you. Um, and so the second sentence says, we're going to pack this out now. Yeah. yeah, if you can just pass this over. Okay. Second sentence says, in order to protect the operation of our county government, to ensure that it is just, orderly, efficient, cost effective, and most importantly, reflective of the Judeo-Christian values inherent in our nation's founding, as well as responsive and transparent to the, to the people of Sumner County, our goal in serving the citizens of Sumner County is to exceed the requirements established in Tennessee state law and do hereby adopt these standing rules and procedures. So I, I guess I have to push back a little bit on that because it's talking about talking about being reflective of the Judeo-Christian values, and I hate to break it to everybody, but America was founded on Christian principles. Americans founded on the Ten Commandments. Americans was founded on Judeo-Christian values, and our founding fathers talked about this exclusively and explicitly. Um, and there is nothing in our founding fathers' documents. It's on our monuments. It's in our courthouses. It's on our, our walls, and got on our, our uh, you know um, Eisenhower got it on our, our money and, and God we trust, or, or excuse me, Eisenhower I think it was Truman, and God we trust even on our money and in the pledge of allegiance. And so this, it's uh, our Judeo-Christian values is our America is 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 prosperous and free because of our Judeo-Christian values, not in spite of it. And so I do like that part. And I guess I'm willing to, um, I guess, press that issue of keeping that in there because it's because when you say reflective of our values, well, whose values are there? We live in such a society where everything is just basically moral relativism, and, and people can say they bark like a dog and they think they're a dog. I mean, it's like the insanity of the mental illness epidemic that's happening in our our, our country today is, is is out of control. So I think when you there are absolutes in this world, and there's absolutes in government, and our government was absolutely founded on Judeo-Christian values, and so that's my opinion, uh, and I like the fact that that was in there, and so I'd be willing to, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I'm going to move to keep that in there if, if we want to adopt this as a preamble, but that's my 
two cents on the matter. So, as your legal counsel, I, I'm sticking by my opinion as of what is currently constitutional law based off of current Supreme Court cases. We've all seen that those can change, but I, I'm not going to advocate for us being a test case to see if we're the ones to change it. It's, I do know that says we do have a miscellaneous rule that says conflict with law. I don't know if this applies. In the event that any of these rules are determined to be in conflict with statutory provisions, such shall be null and void. Uh, however, such a conflict shall not render null and void the remainder of these rules and procedures. I don't know how a preamble, that's not necessarily a rule, it's just a kind of a mission statement preamble. So I don't know if it falls under conflict with law as far as negating a preamble. Um, I don't know. That would not have an effect on this. That would be more a practical effect of, let's say you, the rules required a two-thirds vote when there's a specific statute that said it required a majority. That's where that would come in, not for a statement of values. Um, I'm willing to I mean, move that we keep this as is and pass it on to the full commission, but unless you guys object and uh, open the full discussion. So I want to do you have a motion to discuss this, this amendment? I'll second. All right, second by Commissioner Brown. I move to discuss the adoption of it. Uh, I know in our Constitution, federal Constitution, there's over 500 references used in the Bible. And all of the state constitutions also have freedom of religion, all that kind of stuff in there, and the fact that uh, even there were there were tests of uh, of citizenship in order to hold office also but uh this is you know the inclusion of all this kind of stuff is, is a rather modern thing and in order to understand the founding of our our country you have to go back to that and that's what we're trying to do is is go back to that and as jeremy's also mentioned uh, get away from the silly things that that America has adopted, especially within the past five years, I would say. So I'm, I'm also in favor of keeping it in there. Mr. Chairman? I, I think a fact's a fact. And the fact is that our Constitution and the state Constitution, and probably every Constitution across the nation, was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. I don't see why we would deny the facts as they are and I I would I would agree with keeping it in and letting it go to the full uh, commission and if uh, Mr. Allen won I, I would encourage him to state the same thing I mean I I understand precedence in law changes you know, they're they're established and they build on top of them, but I don't I don't think legally you could argue that this is not a true fact. So, yeah, just because a law exists doesn't mean it's constitutional. Exactly, there's plenty of illegal laws out there. Lots statutes. of illegal laws. Yes. they're not constitutional. So, so the law I'm referring to is the Establishment Clause in the First Amendment. It's and what does that say? That there, the government shall not establish any religion. And we're not establishing a religion. That, 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 that rule has been taken out, uh, clause has been taken out of context so many times. And but we are stating what, a fact that, you know. that the Constitution was based on Judeo Christian. Yeah. We're not establishing that this yeah. is a Judeo Christian. If, if you vote on it, that's how you vote. I was just stating, you know, when you no, mentioned statute, it. what yeah. I was referring to yeah. when I said that. Yeah. I, I want you to always yeah. make a yeah. point yeah. when and you have to check. Definitely. I have to say, too, I don't think that anyone. Uh, wants uh, the Sumner County uh, Commission to establish a religion that You're everyone right. has to come to. I don't think, right. That's not what we're saying, but but everything I do is based around the Lord. I mean, I mean I'd rather say that than, than not. It's the truth. And, uh, and so I appreciate your recommendation, but I do believe that uh, that's been taken out of context a lot. I, I'm completely fine with... Uh, I, I actually, I, I encourage... Uh, you know, I make a motion that we that we adopt the preamble. I sec um, I second it. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. All right. We're going to add that in. Uh, and just a note, uh, I can pass along to um, I kind of started the second draft um, based on this feedback after we got it last week. 
that I can pass along to our um, county attorney as soon as we're done with all these edits or changes. Uh, whatever we do, I'll just, you know, type it out on the fly here. All right, Priam, we'll move on for that. Um, I guess we'll go into this budget language <coughs> for submitted. It was something that a commissioner submitted from the, the from the budget from our finance director. This is one that I, I mean I, I don't I'm not prepared to talk about this tonight or have any language. So um, I guess I'm not going to. I think this would be a, a policy made in the budget committee uh, or financial management. I didn't, see, I didn't quite see that. I didn't quite mm -hmm. fall in, so I was going to basically refer <coughs> this to budget, and then we could discuss this further. And if we needed to adopt something, we can always come back. Yeah, I, I don't believe the standing rules is the appropriate place for this. I didn't either, so that's why I was just uh, um, kind of iffy on that one. So, uh, so without objection, uh, I guess I'll move that we uh, defer that discussion to budget committee about this the budget issues. So if I have a, a second. Okay. So, it's like Commissioner Teaching all the papers say aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Now let's go back to I guess it's this one, the rules and procedures edits document okay. right here. Uh, it was a longer one. Um, so I guess we got the smaller ones out of the way. Um, this one right here, Bob. I just want to yeah. sure I, um, I kind of went through and, and just uh, gave my my opinion and notes on some of these. Um, the first one uh, I was going to basically provide a, a, to be in opposition to this uh, because this actually that Article One, Section C, Item Eight Point Three, under limitations of speech. It used to say prohibitions, which was seemed a little bit more restrictive versus just limitations. Was um, this was actually provided by a lawyer that that deals in constitutional laws and is in the courts all the time? So I'm going to trust his his language there uh, on on this one. So I move to uh, basically uh, uh, vote no on. Uh, this first three paragraphs of, of uh, this document. Uh, have, have a second. Second. All right, all in favor say aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? All right, so we are not going to move forward with that one. Um, Article 1, Section C, Item 8.6. Uh, it says no title listed, page 3. Uh, I thought that was a good thing just to strike. So it talks about you know votes that may have been taken from the chair. Um, and so... I move just to basically simply remove the language where, where it says uh, the tally is, is taken from the chair. So I'm going to just go to that page three real quick. Um, that was something that I can see it's not necessarily, so I, I find striking that out to, for clarification. Uh, so that would be um, on, on section C. Just talking about the last yeah. sentence there, Mr. Chairman, is that right? Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, um, number six. So on page three, it would be Article One. Uh, Article One, I guess, on the recognition of the public, it's number six, where it says, in addition to recording the minutes and naming the address of the citizen, making a public comment, the minutes shall reflect the position of the citizen and the tally of any citizen's vote that may have been taken by the chair. Uh, that was something that was recommended because I know. Chairman Hyde has done that in the past, but I don't want to make that a requirement. Um, and so I just moved to strike out and to tally of any citizen vote that may have been taken by the chair just to strike that out uh, based on the recommendation of this. Uh, so, And I think there was some confusion on what exactly that was. Because speaking to Mr. Hyde, his idea was ask the audience, raise your hand if you're for or against. And I know some commissioners thought it was take a tally of everyone who speaks on which side they spoke for. And, so I, I, I just moved to strike that. Just to go back to what the language was, the basic or just or not language was, but it, it um, just to simplify that without any objections. So, do I have a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. All right. <clears throat> Motion carries. So we will, and I've got that struck in this document right here, Ben. I can send to you, but okay. Um, the Article One, Section C, Item Ten Point Four, Report to the County Officials, which is on page four. Um, I move to strike that completely. I do find that unnecessary and redundant. Uh, I thought that was a good suggestion because it actually is covered already. Um, that we already have county officials <coughs> to list them: finance director, county mayor, uh, county clerk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We list those in the uh, um, uh, down on the in other places. So, uh, under reports of the county officials, number four, just strike that out completely. So, do you guys have any questions about that or any objections? All right, I'll move to to strike that uh, per this document suggestion. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Or did I have a second? Who was the second? Who was the second on that? Did you say? I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. Commissioner Teacher seconded. Sorry. Uh, 
Uh, Commissioner Teacher was a second on that, so all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. So we'll strike that out on that page four, Article Two, Section A, line, line one point four, uh, under Commission Chair uh, or of the County Officials. Sorry. Uh, so Article Two, Section A, Item One Point Four, the Commission Chair, page four, and also group that with if you go down this to the Article Two, Section C, Item Two Point Four, page five. Both of these are kind of talking about the same thing, the verbiage granting the county mayor the power to sign the agenda uh, being removed. Um, I'll, I'll explain that. It's kind of a separation of powers. The legislative body <coughs> is the legislative body, and no other place is that where the president or the executive signs the legislative body's agenda. 